Today, let's learn how to handle the closed passage in just three steps. But first, let's understand what a closed passage is. Imagine you are faced with a paragraph like this. A closed passage is a text with missing words requiring you to fill in the blanks with the most appropriate choices. Remember, closed passage test your grammatical muscle. So first, let's give it a quick workout. And your first exercise is to brush up on your present, past and future tenses. Because knowing when to use was, were and will be and their comrades is crucial. Your exercise too is to befriend nouns, verbs, adjectives and adverbs because they are the building blocks of sentences and you need to recognize them like old friends. Exercise 3 is to master the subject verb agreement, clause construction and punctuation. I already have a video on subject verb agreement and the other two will be covered in the upcoming videos. Remember, a well-built sentence is a happy sentence. And step 1, done. Step 2 is expanding your vocabulary arsenal. Knowing synonyms and antonyms, that is alternative words and their opposites, is key to deciphering missing words. Next, explore prefixes, suffixes and root words. They will help you unlock the hidden meanings within unfamiliar words. And most importantly, don't panic if you don't know a word. Look for clues in the surrounding sentences. Alright, now it's time to face it. Here's your battle plan. Number 1. Look at the passage. Get the gist of the story, the tone and the overall flow. Number 2. Analyze the surrounding sentences for clues about the missing words, part of speech, grammatical function and meaning. Number 3. Eliminate obviously wrong choices and select the word that best fits the context and makes grammatical sense. Number 4. Don't be afraid to guess. A logical guess based on context is better than leaving it blank, right? And number 5. Read the completed passage aloud and check if it sounds smooth and natural. In case not, then reevaluate your choices. And we reach the finale. It's time to solve a closed passage step by step. The old lighthouse keeper, dashed with salt and wind, stood at the edge of the cliff. His eyes dashed the restless sea. The storm had dashed for hours, waves crashing against the rocks like angry giants. He knew the coast well, every jagged tooth and hidden cove, yet the storm felt dashed than any he had seen before. He gripped the railing, the wood worn smooth by countless hand and dash a silent prayer for the sailors caught in fury. And here is a question for the first plank. Choose the missing word that best fits the context and grammatically fits the sentence. And the options are tanned, weathered, wrinkled or exhausted. Now let's analyze each choice first. A. Tanned. This fits the context of an outdoor job but doesn't get with wind grammatically. B. Weathered. It's actually an excellent choice because it fits both the context and grammar, suggesting the keeper's experience with the elements. C. Wrinkled is not as strong as weathered for this particular context and D. Exhausted doesn't necessarily align with the description of the lighthouse keeper standing. Therefore, the best choice is be weathered. Analyze the surrounding sentence 
and choose a verb that makes the most sense. The options are ignoring, scanning, admiring, fearing. Now let's analyze each choice. Ignoring doesn't fit the tone of concern implied by the context. Scanning is a good choice because it suggests active observation of the sea. Admiring doesn't fit the stormy situation at all. And fearing it is possible but scanning paints a more active picture. Therefore, the best choice would be B. Scanning. Consider the timeline and choose the correct verb tense. And the choices are, let's analyze. Begun is the past perfect tense which suggests an earlier starting point than implied. Had been rigging is perfect because it captures the ongoing continuous nature of the storm. Was rigging is a past tense which implies the storm stopped which is in the case. And will rig of course is a future tense that doesn't fit the past context. Therefore, the best choice is B had been rigging. Compare the storm to others with an appropriate adjective. Now let's analyze. Worse is simple but effective. Angrier is metamorphical but it also adds intensity. Stranger it is possible but worse or angrier emphasizes the storm's power. Right? But different doesn't convey the sense of severity at all. Therefore, you can use both A and B in this context. Determine the action that fits the keeper's character and situation. Time to analyze. Shouted doesn't seem appropriate in the solemn context, right? No one shouts a prayer. Muttered is too stubble for the situation. We often offer prayer, but here offered doesn't fit the grammar of the sentence. However, breath is perfect because it suggests a quite heartfelt prayer. Therefore, the best choice is D. Breath. And finally, the old lighthouse keeper, weathered with salt and wind, stood at the edge of the cliff, his eyes scanning the restless sea. The storm had been raking for hours, waves crashing against the rocks like angry giants. He knew the coast well, every jagged tooth and hidden cove, yet the storm felt worse or angrier than any he had seen before. He gripped the railing, the wood wore smooth by countless hands, and read a silent prayer for the sailors caught in the fury. Sounds good? Yes. So, we are ready to go. By following these steps and analyzing each plank individually, you can confidently grab those 5 marks for the close passage. And if you want to be an ultimate close champion, try this. Pro tips. There are tons of close exercises online and in textbooks. The more you train, the sharper your skills become. Expose yourself to different writing styles and genres. The more you read, the better you'll understand how language works. And when bored of reading and writing, play word games like crosswords, scrabble, and other word puzzles to boost your vocabulary and critical thinking skills. Subscribe if not, like and share this video with your bestie. See you in the next video. Take care. Bye-bye.